What's up my friends, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the electrical power grid. Why we use AC instead of DC, why we have triple phase than just one phase, the distance between the consumer and the generator, power losses on the lines, transformers and much more. So guys, let's get started. Before we start guys, as always, this video is sponsored by JLCPCB. If you have a project like this one and you want better results than just connections on a breadboard, consider ordering your PCB from JLCPCB and get something like this. All you have to do is to make your design in any CAD platform and then upload the garbage files to JLCPCB.com. Select the settings and get a nice PCB like this one in just a couple of days. In this way your project will look a lot more professional and you will get better results and maybe even launch a new product on the market. So guys, consider using the services of JLCPCB.com. Now, let's get with our video. Ok guys, what is this electrical power grid? In the past, when we first started using electricity, as you can see, we had some generators around town. And then connected to some poles closer to the generator, we had some light bulbs and other devices. But then, the more consumers we get, we needed more and more power. And at the same time, this will be further from the generator, so the transmission line must change. You will see that each time the power plants will get further and further from the cities and we'll need more components such as transformers, bigger power lines and much more and you will see that in a few moments. In a few years we have created this so-called power grid, a bunch of wires or electrical conductors all around our countries, connecting the producer of electricity with the consumer. Ok, so first let's talk about the power plants and the consumer. And first of all by consumer I mean us, factories and anybody who uses electricity. These power plants had to get bigger and bigger in order to provide more power and satisfy the demand of our consumer. But at the same time, these power plants must be further and further from the city area, because we can't have a hydraulic turbine, or a solar power station, or a nuclear power plant in the middle of Barcelona for example. We have to go further and further from the city. So in that way, the further we get, we need more wires, and that will increase costs and the complicity of the power grid. So we need to make this as efficient as we can in order to reduce the costs, and we'll see how in a few moments. And the second thing that will happen is that we will have a power dissipation increase in an exponential scale, because more cable equals to more resistance, and more resistance at the same voltage, because we still want to have the same voltage at the output, will equal to more current, and that equals to more power loss. And the third thing that it will happen is that the power grid will get more complicated, and it will have more components, it's not just the consumer and the generator anymore, we now have transformers, phase controllers, critical timing, the power lines and much more. So guys, we have cost and power dissipation. These are the two main topics we have to talk about. So for that we have to reduce the power line length, reduce the cable weight and by that at the same time reduce the power loss. So let's start with this power loss. Ok, so first of all a little bit of theory. As you can see we know that power is equal to voltage times current. At the same time using the Ohm law we know that the voltage is equal to resistance times current as well. So using these two formulas we get that the power is equal to voltage, which is resistance times current, multiplied by current, and that is resistance current squared, and that is very important, the squared factor. At the same time we know that the resistance of a cable is given by a constant value multiplied by the length of that cable and divided by the area of the cable. So the bigger is the area of a cable, the lower will be the resistance, and at the same time, the longer is the cable, the resistance will be higher. So these two factors are very important. We have to know the resistance of a cable and that the power is equal to that resistance multiplied by the current squared. To understand this better, that a bigger area will give a lower resistance and the longer cable will have a higher resistance, we have this. Imagine this as a series or a parallel connection. The longer is the cable is like having multiple small resistors in series. And the thicker is the cable is like having multiple resistors in parallel. So that's why we have lower and higher resistance. Ok guys, so this is the formula we had before. So we know that power is equal to resistance current squared. So if you want to lower the power, we have two options. We can lower the resistance, so in this case the resistance of the cable, or we can lower the current. So let's see how. Ok, so let's see the options to lower the resistance. First of all, we can make the cable shorter, but that is not a good option, because the distance between the consumer and the producer must be the same, because the power plant will be always in the same spot and the city and us consumers will be always in the same spot as well. So that is not a good option. At the same time, we can make the cable thicker, and by that reduce the current, but that will give us a lot of problems, such as the cost will increase, we need a lot more copper, the cable will get very very heavy, and for example, to lower the power dissipation a few factors, we need to have a cable like half meter thick, and that's not a solution, 
because at the same time we'll need thicker cables and also stronger structures in order to carry that cable. And this structure I'm pretty sure it won't be in the air anymore, maybe underground. So as you can see a thicker cable is not a solution either. The problem is in the squared factor and this is why. As you can see in this example if I reduce the resistance by half the power loss will also reduce by half. Ok so that's pretty good. But if I reduce the current by half, the power loss will reduce by 4 times, because we have the squared factor, so the power loss will reduce in an exponential scale. So the better solution is to lower the current value, not the resistance. And let's see how to do this. If you want to reduce the current and keeping the same resistance and the same power because we still want to have the same power in the power lines, we have to increase the voltage, a lot. Increasing the voltage is a lot more easier than reducing the resistance of the cable. We increase the voltage all the time, and this is how we do it. We use huge transformers to boost the voltage to 100 of kilovolts, or even more. So with higher voltage we get less power loss in the lines, but at the same time the grid will get more complicated because we need more components. As you can see in this example we have something like this. First we need the generator station to create our voltage. And then we need the step out transformers to boost the voltage to hundreds of kilovolts. Then we have the high voltage transmission lines which are just the wires. And then we need the step down transformers in order to get the voltage to low values for us consumers. And for that we have some step down transformers that will get the voltage to around 50 kilovolts for our factories or maybe 120 or 240 volts for our homes. So by changing high current by high voltage the power grid can handle the power that we need. Ok so we got our solution, increasing the voltage. Ok guys, let's see a little bit more about the power grid. Usually most of the wires of the transmission lines don't have insulators on it, because that will make the cable very thick and very very heavy, and that at the same time will increase the costs. So instead of adding insulators the engineer thought of a better and simple solution. All we have to do is to place the wires with bigger distance one from the other, in this way we won't have discharges. At the same time, if you ever seen a power transmission line, one like this one, you will see that the electrical tower is very big and tall in order to prevent discharges with anybody or anything on the ground. The air is a very good insulator, so creating big air gaps between the lines will insulate the grid. Usually we have a few meters between the wires of any high power line, and we also have to take in consideration the weather, because when it's raining the air could be more conductive and electrical arcs could create in between the air. Closer to the tower which is made out of metal, we use these ceramic discs, in order to connect the wire to the tower and not create electrical arcs. Ok guys, so interesting fact. We use a disc shaped insulator and not just a tube because when it's raining the conductivity could increase and the superficial path of the electricity is longer using this disc than just a straight line and like this we can avoid leakage. Ok so this high power transmission had 3 phases and why is that? Let's see why. First of all compared with a single phase transmission we have the same phase to ground voltage and also 3 phases so we can deliver 3 times the power but using only 1.5 times more wires and this is how. Have in mind that we always need a return path for the current. Let's take the single phase example first. We have a live wire which will be the phase in and we have the neutral and this will be our return path. We also have the ground but that's not important yet. In this way the voltage will enter to the live wire and it will return to the generator using the neutral. So if you want to have 3 phases like this one you should use 6 wires because you have 3 live wires and 3 neutral. But using a triple phase system this is not necessary. In the triple phase system we have 120 degrees phase shift between the lines. So in any given moment the sum of the currents for all the lines is equal to zero. So the return path for each phase are the other two phases. So guys by using just 3 wires instead of 6 we get 3 times more power. And that's just one of the reasons we use a triple phase system. At the same time triple phase is better with high power AC motors that we use in factories. For low voltage appliances we can add a fourth wire as a neutral. In this way we could have 3 phases that we could use as a single phase. At the same time the phase current will tend to cancel each other's out. So in this way if we do add a neutral line this can be very small because the current value will be low as well. The magnetic field between the phases will also cancel out. And at the same time the motor and generator vibration will reduce because in this way we are more balanced. Ok guys so finally to answer the question of why we use AC instead of DC this is why. First of all using AC we can use transformers to boost the voltage. If you want to boost DC voltage is more complicated and you need more components. At the same time AC will dissipate less power because AC can pass through the lines easier. Also using AC we can take advantage of the triple phase system as we have seen before. At the same time the generators will already produce AC current so we don't need to rectify the voltage. We can use AC directly with AC motors which are much more efficient. In this way we can take AC from the generator and place it into the motor and that's it. So guys I hope that you like this video and that you have learned something new. 
If you want, subscribe to this channel and give a like to this video, and consider supporting my work on Patreon. Thanks again, and see you later guys!